Hello and welcome to this video about Boole's Rule. In this video, we'll derive Boole's Rule using matrices. Boole's Rule is a numerical integration method that uses the values of the function to integrate the function and without any knowledge of what the function itself is, just like the trapezoidal and Simpson rules. It uses five points to integrate this function for each segment. It assumes that the integral is well approximated by a polynomial of degree 4. While it is theoretically better than the trapezoidal and Simpson's rules, it is prone to be very unstable and should only be used for gently sloping curves, theoretical curves that don't have an integral function, or curves that truly are polynomials of degree 4 or less. So this is the polynomial equation that is assumed to very accurately approximate this curve. In this case, it is exactly equal to this curve. This numerical integration method is invariant under translation, so it can be used to integrate the curve anywhere along the horizontal axis. So these are all of the values of the function for all of the first five integers 0 to 4. We can then pack these equations up into this matrix equation. And then we can evaluate all of the entries of this matrix. I'll just write it out again up here. We can then make the vector containing the coefficients of this polynomial into the subject of this equation. We can then evaluate this matrix inverse. The entries are approximated here to four significant figures. There isn't another way to get these entries than by inverting another constructed matrix. So larger matrices for these rules would be hard to calculate accurately. We can then calculate the integral of this function theoretically using the integration rules for polynomials. This is the integral of this polynomial. After substituting the values into this equation, we get this expression, which needs to be evaluated. I'll just write it out again here. We'll start to simplify it. Simplifying this expression gives us this equation. The coefficients of this polynomial can be left to be anything, and can be left as variables. I'll just write it out again here. This expression may be packed up into this vector product. So we have these two equations. We have to substitute one into the other so as to eliminate all of the coefficient terms so that the area may be calculated only by the values or heights of the function. We'll do this by substitution so that all of the a's are eliminated. And so multiplying this vector by this matrix gives us this equation, which is Boole's rule for five points. This equation will look a little bit different when more points are used, because the points at the end of the segment will overlap. I've circled the overlapping point in red that will have a coefficient twice the size of the endpoints, caused by this overlapping of points. The term h is the distance between two points, and may be thought of as being a scaling factor. Now I'm going to try finding Boole's rule using a smaller matrix. This is a matrix equation describing how to calculate the values of the coefficients of Boole's rule, which I named B0 to B4. We'll use this equation, which has been calculated before, to find these values. This is the matrix equation which finds the area under the curve in terms of the function values or heights of the function and the Boole's rule coefficients. We can use both of these equations to get this equation. Then we can transpose this whole equation to get this equation which is really the same equation but set out in a more compact form. I'll just write it out again here to give myself some more room. We'll evaluate all of the entries in this matrix. Then we'll make the other vector into the subject of this equation and also substitute B1 in for B3 
and B0 in for B4, since they'll be equal. Then we'll perform this matrix compaction operation by adding the last column to the first column and the second last column to the second column, which you should be able to see is correct. I'll just write it out again here. Evaluating all of the entries gives us this matrix. We can then discard the upper part of the matrix to leave this lower portion, which should be linearly independent and therefore solvable. So then we'll make the B vector into the subject of this equation. And so then we'll get these values for this vector, which is equal to the first three coefficients of Boole's rule. I'll just write it out again up here. Then we can expand this vector out so it can calculate a segment with five function values at a time. And then it can be substituted into the standard equation for Boole's rule, like it can for Simpson's rules. It still needs more processing, so you can see what happens next. The advantage of using a smaller matrix is that it keeps numerical accuracy better. This doesn't make a big difference with Boole's rule because the matrix was only 5 times 5 at its largest, but it would make a big difference for rules that perform numerical integration with much larger numbers of points per segment, like 50 or even 100. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Please click like and subscribe if you have enjoyed it. Please let me know all of your thoughts and opinions about this video in the comments. And thank you for watching.